Hi guys, welcome back. And today in this very short video, I'm going to talk about how you can empower your existing Selenium test automation code with the power of AI without you using any third party tools like YBM for that matter. Like people are going crazy and talking about YBM while the tool doesn't exist yet. But the creator of the YBM is of course the creator of Selenium. So sure, we should get something amazing out of it. While it's still not there, I'm not 100% sure what difference it's going to make. But you know what? You can make your existing Selenium test or Playwright test more intelligent and also empower it using the power of AI. I'm not really talking about the usage of the uh, AI tools like Cursor or Copilot to write the test for you. Rather, you are going to make your existing test self-reliant, intelligent, and also self-healed and also you can say whatever that you really wanted to in order to make your test more intelligent to be honest so it's going to be not very brittle because you know that ui tests are always brittle they are fragile they break all the time but in this particular video i will show you how nothing is going to happen like that and you can see that this particular code that you are seeing over here is actually an ai powered code behind the scene and also we can use both our local large language model as well as the cloud based AI models as well, like GPT model for that matter. So this particular code looks pretty familiar, except one thing over here is that these find element by is actually an asynchronous method. Whereas in Selenium, you know that the find elements are synchronous method, but I have made this asynchronous because you know Playwright is asynchronous as well. So over here, you see that this is a classical uh, operation that I'm trying to do. So this is going to be a login link operation, I'm going to be clicking this in this particular element. This is the identification. And then we can see that this is the element details link that I have identified using find element and also the manage user log off. And if you go to the login page, same thing gonna happen for the username, password and submit button like that, right? Pretty much exactly the same thing which we always write. But the only thing is, what if I say all these find element that you are seeing over here all AI powered. So there is an AI sauce running behind the scene to make this happen. And I'm not gonna go through entire implementation details because it could easily take a couple of sections in my course, but I will quickly give you a glimpse and then we can talk more detailed about that in a later point of time. Again, if you're only interested, just put the details in the comment below, we can talk about it. But you know what? Now I'm gonna run this particular code and we'll show you how it actually works. And then I will quickly show you how you can use the power of the AI to do the exact same operation, right? So now the locators are pretty much intact. So I mean, this is the correct locator that I'm gonna be uh, using. So I'm not gonna uh, jeopardize the uh, locators right now. And if I'm gonna run this particular code over here, you should see that it's gonna open the browser, perform the operation, and it's gonna click the uh, employee details, manage user, log off, boom. It's all completed. But guess what? Behind the scene, there is also one locator which took a bit of a time because there was an AI call happened uh, in the background. I will show you what I really mean about that. So if you just go to our code over here, the, the pin folder of this particular locator, so you see that all these locators that I gave over here are all just mapped over here as a mapping or whatever that you call it. And it's gonna hold all the information about the locators. And you will see that this employee details for some reason the success count got uh, one and there is a failure count as well. So there was no failure count before, but in here there is a failure count. And this is happening because the employee details locator is actually wrong. So the AI came in and it made the operation to be successful, but in reality, the locator actually did not work. That's why the failure count is one over here. And now if I'm gonna run the same code one more time, you'll understand that the count will increase increase for the failure count so if you're going to see over here the employee details still took a bit of a time there and if i'm going to open this particular locator you see that the success count and failure count just increased by two right but over here the success count is just increasing uh, but there is no failure count this is all happening because there is an AI running behind the scene. Well, I am keep on telling about AI, AI, where exactly is AI happening, Karthik? You're not even showing all of these information to us. Well, guess what? Over here in the utilities, we have already talked about a bit on my other course in Udemy, like how you can create the open AI utilities. But now this code has been extended even further to make it even more refined, something like this. And guess what? There is also an app settings file over here where I'm actually setting the provider as cloud 
as well as the provider as local. So which means if I'm going to set local, then it's going to use my local GPT OSS 20 billion parameter model to perform this operation. And if you're going to set cloud, then it's going to use the GPT 4.0 mini model from OpenAI. That's how it is going to work using this particular setting. Right, so it's kind of fusion of both of them, like both local as well as the cloud-based uh, OpenAI models. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, completely scramble this particular locator as you are seeing over here. I'm going to set the username like this, password, oops, and submit, oops, and I'm going to just leave the die. The the thing that how this all just works is because we have got a friendly name over here, which says username field, and there is a friendly name called password field and the login button. This is actually going to give you the context or give the AI the context to get the locator exactly that we're looking for instead of using this particular locator that you have just jeopardized completely, right? So I'm going to just save this whole code and now I'm going to run it again. And again, this time it is going to fully use the AI to make this operation happen. And you see that it is still faster to see the login. I have completely scrambled the username and password also. And look at that, it's still working. These are all happening because there is this AI working. And now if I'm going to go and see this particular thing over here, uh, you can see that maybe I'm just going to just double click this guy again. Uh, you can see that the login link just worked out. I look at the password field over here, like the username field and the password field. Like it's all completely scrambled because it's it's not correct, right? And the failure count was two there uh, and the success count was zero. But there is an alternative locator ID which, which is being used and that's why it is being set as one over here. See, this is how things are just keep on improving. So that's how you use the cloud-based AI over here. So all you are doing is just using the existing infrastructure, but just adding AI sauce in it. And now let's say I'm going to use my local large language model. So I'm just going to say local over here. And if I'm going to run this particular code, this time it's not going to burn any money on my you know, open AI's model. So you see that it's going to be not very fast as opposed to the GPT model, it is going to take a bit of a time, but you see that it is still going to work. It is doing a lot of computation in my machine at the moment. See, I'm recording the screen and I'm also doing the execution of the large language model over here. That's why it's taking a bit of a time there. Uh, and hopefully, yeah, there we go. It worked and just wait for the login button to be clicked. There we go. It got clicked and then all the rest of the operation is faster. These are all happening because of the power of the AI running behind the scene and it's doing it for me. So that's how you can see how you can use the power of AI to make your test code more smarter, self-healed and also not very fragile or brittle. I think that's one of the use case that you can think of how you can use AI in your existing code and while you always ask is it AI is gonna replace your existing job or maybe the test code? Not really. This is one of the use cases that you should think of, like how you can improve your existing test scores with the power of AI and make your code more smarter and less fragile. Once again, thank you so much for watching this video. Catch the next one.